everyone. Thanks for joining us on the news briefing for this Wednesday. We're going to go ahead and get started with our topics. And I see uh, Tiana Super from FEMA has joined us. We're going to get started with information from FEMA. Good afternoon, Tiana. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, Pajaro Park um, is still open. Um, there may be a change of it moving to another location. And when that happens, we will let you know. Uh, but we are still there. We're still helping survivors. Um, now with the extension, uh, we're still encouraging people to come to our DRC. So um, that's pretty much it, really. Nothing um, big has turned out um, as far as the DRC. So um, we're just asking more people to come in and, and register. And um, we're still there to help and we'll still be in the area to help, maybe just not the same location. So uh, we will let you know that um, uh, when it comes up. Thank you, Tiana. And before we go to Marielle with um, SBA, I'm wondering if you can uh, clarify some information. We still get questions about individual assistance and rental assistance. Can you explain, you know, for people who are applying, what those two are? They interchangeable? Are they the same? Are they two different things? Yeah. So rental assistance is under individual assistance is one of the programs under individual assistance. So individual assistance is like the entire program, which in which we offer rental assistance and housing assistance and, you know, replacement of, uh, you know, damaged property and things like that, or, or repairing of your home. So it's just uh, under the individual assistance umbrella. The rental assistance is just one of those uh, programs that we offer to people who have been displaced from their homes um, or have been displaced uh, from their apartments. And um, if you are or have been displaced from your home, you're waiting for it to be repaired or you are waiting for your apartment building to be built or you're looking for another place, we are encouraging people to keep in touch with FEMA and let us know uh, what's going on, keep us updated. And if you need more time, if you need more assistance with your rental assistance, then let FEMA know as well. And, um, and then we can process that for you. Um, if, you if FEMA doesn't know what's going on, um, then it can you know, halt your rental assistance. So um, if you have a, a letter saying, hey, you know, this is going to open at this, at this time, they say that we can move in at this time, let FEMA know that as well. Just keep in touch with FEMA, keep us updated and uh, let us know what your situation is so that we can continue to help any way that we can. You know, and I think that's one of the big advantages for having FEMA in place and why so many people were anxious for having FEMA here is because that is just really critical, especially in an area where so many people are not yet back in their homes. Yes, yes. So it, it's, it's just very important. Um, like I said, we, we won't know what's going on unless you tell us. So um, if you are going to be moving in next month, let FEMA know that you'll need a little more assistance until that very date. So it's just all about having that documentation, letting us know, uh, or having a letter from your landlord, whatever it may be, you know, stating these things and let FEMA know, and then we can continue to help. So please, please keep in touch with FEMA. Let us know what's going on. Keep us updated. Thank you, Tiana. And before we turn to Mary Ellie, if you have questions for Tiana or any of our other speakers, please go ahead and put them in chat and we will ask them. Uh, so Mary Ellie, thanks from SBA. Thanks as usual for being here to give us information. Hello, everybody. Okay, let's uh, quickly uh, talk about the SBA numbers. As Tiana said, uh, we continue working in Monterey Park. We're still open uh, for now, and <clears throat> we are there to assist all the survivors of Monterey. So <clears throat> having said that, let's talk about numbers. Okay, so far, SBA have received 1,000, what, 1,000, I'm sorry, 1,107 referrals applications from FEMA. So far, we have received 35 home loan home loan applications for SBA. We have received 40 applications for business and uh, for a total of 75 applications. SBA have approved more than $2 million um, on SBA disaster assistance. That is a very good number. We're still working 
uh, on the disaster recovery of Monterey. So please continue assisting us uh, to distribute the information regarding our SBA disaster assistance. And that's it for now. Maya, I don't know if you wanted me to translate the information or is that okay for you? Well, we do have some of our Spanish media, Spanish language media on. So if you could translate it, it would be wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, saludos a todos, por lo menos por ahora, como dijo mi compañera Tiana de FEMA. Eh, continuamos abiertos en el eh, condado de Monterrey, en Mon Monterrey Park. Eh, todavía pues no sabemos hacia dónde se van a mover, si fuera que se van a mover, pero por lo menos por ahora estamos allí disponibles para servirle a todos los sobrevivientes de Monterrey. Eh, hemos recibido 1,107 eh, referidos de parte de FEMA. Hemos recibido 35 aplicaciones de propietarios en la SBA, 40 aplicaciones de negocios y organizaciones sin fines de lucro para un total de 75 aplicaciones. Hemos aprobado más de 2 millones de dólares en préstamos de la SBA, específicamente 2.3 millones para que tengan una idea. Eh, eso es todo por ahora. Thank you so much. Oh, Maya, in English, I'm sorry. I said uh, SBA have approved more than $2 million, but we are uh, approving, we have approved uh, $2 million, $2.3 million. I will send the information to you. And that is for Monterey County, correct? Yes, ma'am, just for Monterey County. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you so much for being here and always giving us this updated information to keep us informed about uh, what these, these benefits that our Pajaro residents are receiving. Yes, ma'am, my pleasure. And then we didn't have her on the schedule, but she is here with us. Laura Kirshner with Workforce Development is dropping in quickly to give us an update on the Pajaro Job Fair, which happened a week ago. And she's got some results for us. Hi, Laura. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, I do. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, we had, uh, I'm pleased to, to say uh, 15 people were hired as a result of the, uh, the Pajaro Job Fair. Uh, there were 86 resumes that were collected at the event as well. Uh, 26 in interviews were scheduled as a result of that job fair. We had lots of interest across the board in many, many different positions. There were 32 employers that participated, uh, both local um, um, uh, businesses, uh, as, as far as uh, nonprofit organizations uh, that had openings and uh, regular uh, employers. So we are just thrilled. want to thank everybody that was involved. Uh, County of Monterey, who partnered with us, the Workforce Development Board of Santa Cruz County, and of course, our Monterey County Workforce Development Board, and all of our staffers that worked real hard. And want to thank everybody in the media for helping to spread the information. It was a very worthwhile event. Our Lady of Assumption Church really came through for us, and they were uh, a wonderful uh, location for the event. So we we're just thrilled. Uh, we have some photos you might see behind me here. Put those into a little video display. Thank you to Jackson, who's working with Nick to uh, to put to make those available. Uh, those were taken at the event. Uh, like I said, 32 employers. You can see people were real excited to be there. The uh, venue lended lended itself well to the uh, the job fair and very successful. Over 100 job seekers um, attended. We were just thrilled. So uh, thank you once again. I'm glad to be able to report again that over 50. 15 individuals were hired as a result, and I saw lots of uh, happy faces while there. And that you said also 26 interviews were scheduled, so there yes. could be for more is what you're saying. There could be more down the line. And in fact, I think there probably will be. Uh, so yeah, it was a, it was a great, uh, it was a great event and we are, we're thrilled and very happy to be able to, to give a good report. Thank you so much, Laura. Great, great news. Thank you. So um, we're going to move on from our Pajaro topic to other topics. If there are any questions for any of our um, folks who are on the Pajaro topics, this would be the good time to put them in chat. If not, we're going to go ahead and move on. We do have one question um, in chat. And let me go ahead and ask it and see um, who might be able to um, answer this question. This is about recovery in Pajaro, specifically about the residents staying in hotels. Can we provide an update on the number of people in the hotels waiting to return to their homes that are being repaired? Uh, which agencies are managing that and paying for that? And then is the county 
So let's start with that one. Do we, I think we may have some people from housing and community development or Department of Emergency Management who might be able to ask. Do we have an update on our shelter uh, population? I'm not seeing anyone. The last number was about 240. And um, I, if that number is, I'm gonna check that number after the briefing. And if that number is not correct, I will go ahead and follow up with you. Mm -hmm. And which agencies are managing and paying for the hotels? That would be the County of Monterey. This is a County of Monterey program. And then the second part of the, it's kind of a long question, so I'm breaking it up into two. Is the county asking those residents that are staying in hotels to fill out a search log to show they are looking for alternate permanent housing in the meantime while they're waiting for uh, being able to return uh, for, for instance, for repairs to homes, uh, for example, Kent's Court. Darby, can I, I see you're on. Can you possibly answer that question? So we, I, I believe OES is collecting that information because at some point in the future, um, the, the non-congregated shelter hotel rooms that the county is currently paying for may be FEMA reimbursable. And we'll have to show that the, tenant, that the, the benefiting uh, households were looking for permanent housing or that they had a, a, a date certain as to when um, they were going to be able to return. I know that I was contacted by some Ken's Court residents asking, saying that FEMA had specifically asked for a letter indicating when they would be allowed to return uh, as part of their individual assistance um, renewals. So we provided that letter. Um, and I believe that that's the reason that OES is requesting that data. And I believe Tiana Super mentioned that um, people who are not able to, who may have a housing issues, they want them to keep in contact with FEMA to let them know if their return date has changed. That seems to fit in with, with this information. Darby? Yes, yeah, that, that would be my understanding. Again, uh, we really need somebody from OES. I'm, they're much more in tune with uh, what's happening between FEMA and, and the county with NCS. And I, you know, I don't want to put Tiana on the spot, but Tiana, if I think you're still on. Is this pretty, is this uh, routine for FEMA to stay connected with residents and find out their status of, you know, looking for housing if they may need additional um, reimbursements or additional support? Yes, yes. Um, it is very common. Uh, sometimes it takes a while. Some people you know, um, if they have a letter from their contractor saying, hey, you can't move in until we do this and this and that. We have a letter from your landlord is saying, oh, you can move in next month. Or uh, if you have any documentation that says that you are still looking, um, if you're unable to find something and you're still looking, then you can continue to get that assistance. So it's all about really informing FEMA about what's going on uh, with, with you and your household and to make sure that we can continue to help. If, like I said, if we don't have that information, then we don't know. And it, you know, we can only cover you for two months. If you need more than that, then definitely keep us updated. So we will continue to, to, to provide that assistance, but there has to be a documentation with, with FEMA at least. So um, if you have those things, you're still looking, that's fine. Uh, if you're still waiting, that's fine as well. Just, just let us know and, and show us the, the proof and the, the documentation. Thank you so much, Tiana. And for the person who was asking that question, I'm hoping that that, that's, that seems to cover everything that you had asked for. Um, so if any other questions come in on that topic, we're gonna move to our other topics. If more questions come in on that topic, I'll go ahead and uh, respond directly to the reporter and then also share this information with everyone on the call. So now we're gonna move on to uh, another topic. We're gonna to talk about the housing element update. We're very happy to have Melanie Beretta here with us today. You may have heard about some virtual meetings that have been going on about the county's housing element of the general plan. This is focusing on how the county will meet housing needs. And Melanie is here to talk about what you know these meetings, what staff is sharing with the community and what some of the responses are that 
the community has been sharing with the county. Hi, Melanie. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for having me, Maya. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, so you can get more detailed information from our webpage. It'll be included in this, um, but bear with me. I'm just going to do a quick share screen um, and pop through a quick presentation. I like my visuals and Maya has these um, to be able to share both in English and Spanish uh, with you all as well. All right. Okay, so the County of Monterey is in the process of updating its um, housing element for the six cycle update. A uh, reminder that the county's housing element only covers the unincorporated areas of Monterey County, so not within each city jurisdiction. Um, and just a high level reminder of what a housing element is, it's the primary housing planning document. It implements the county's vision and plan. Um, for housing to address local housing needs and a range of incomes, along with meeting state law. So um, earlier this year, we distributed a community survey. Uh, we actually received a fairly good response to that survey. Um, we had over 500 respondents throughout the county in English and Spanish. This is just a general distribution of where we heard from, what communities uh, we heard from, and we really were well distributed throughout the county. Um, some of the key information that we are hearing, uh, kind of key findings that we're hearing is, you know, the housing that's most needed, really apartment rentals and employee housing. Those are the areas that kind of uh, bubbled up as getting the most responses for needs. Um, really high housing needs for our unhoused here in the county, for our single parents with female heads of households um, and for our lower income agricultural workers. Um, we saw of those who responded, we saw 16% had experienced housing discrimination based on income source, their race and or the size of their families. Uh, so that's a problem we're hoping to address in this housing element. Um, and then also looking at supporting fair housing, 30% um, responded that fair housing services were not sufficient. Uh, either there were concerns over affordability of that uh, housing, accessibility, and or just access to information, how you get into um, housing that's in your affordability range. And then also supporting housing opportunities, um, meeting more affordable housing built throughout the county, really looking at our underserved communities um, and improving the infrastructure, improving our transit and services and our outreach to those communities um, across the county. We, in addition to the general broad community um, outreach that we conducted, we also conducted a series of focused stakeholder meetings as well to dig in a little deeper to some of these themes uh, by particular area. Um, and again, what we heard there, some of the key take homes were that affordable, affordable housing, if it's available, it's not sufficient for the number of people who need it. I think all of us who live and work here know these uh, facts. Um, that we really need to be looking towards building housing in closer proximity to amend amenities, shops, schools, hospitals. And again, that's one of our challenges in the unincorporated areas of Monterey County, uh, where those services are more typically found within city limits and jurisdictions that we need to really be focusing on. Um, housing variety, really taking a look at and need to take a look at our fees our processing times and our process and our permit processes all around um, for developing in particular affordable housing, but really housing across the board. Um, and then also even further streamlining housing and in particular affordable housing to make it more easily accessible. So where we're at in the process now, we so as you all know, we have our regional housing needs, um, needs allocation. So that's our RENA allocation for the unincorporated areas of Monterey County. Uh, we have a total assignment in one, two, three, four, the fifth column, the RENA assignment is 3,326. This is our minimum. This is our minimum set by the state. We would love if we could go beyond this minimum, um, but also in order to plan and hope to be successful given market considerations and other things in order to achieve those 3,326 across those affordability levels um, uh, that are assigned. 
uh, we are actually planning a minimum, uh, we're actually planning with a recommended buffer that gets us up more towards 5,000, over 5,000 units that are actually planned for where we have to demonstrate we have the physical sites, zoning, uh, regulatory programs and policies to be able to support uh, development to be able to happen uh, within the county to achieve those numbers. So in order, so where we're at right now and what we have made available to the public is our site's inventory. So this is our initial um, review of those sites across the county where we think we can best achieve all of the balancing um, priorities that we have. Um, generally, we wanna meet those legal requirements. We wanna incorporate well-informed sound planning. And we, um, those were released on June 30th for a 30 day re review period. So we're asking for any comments, public feedback on the site's inventory by June 30th. And I have information on where folks can access that information and send it. Um, again, this will be distributed to you all. So you'll have it, it's also available on our website, but this is the breakdown of how many sites, what, how many units within each of the income levels in total by geographic and community planning area across the county. So next steps for the housing element, again, by June 30th, we'd love to hear public comment on those sites. Um, we'd love anyone who may have interest in helping to support and build housing on their properties if they're not included in our site's inventory to let us know. Uh, we'd love to partner with you and help see how to make that more feasible. Um, we're looking at late summer to have our draft housing element available for public review. Um, and, um, that, uh, and that will really be the next key um, point in time for the community to get involved. So with that, if anyone has comments, questions, if you wanna submit comments about the site's inventory, you can submit those to our general plan updates email. Um, folks who receive that are bilingual, so that can be in English and Spanish. If folks have questions, you can contact our colleagues there in English uh, for Jamie and uh, Edgar Sanchez in English or Spanish. Um, and you can access, if you go to the web page there, um, and then when you're on that web page uh, in the, the you know, what's new, it'll actually link you to a map of the particular sites that are included as a part of our site's inventory. So you can get all of that information on our webpage. And so with that, I just thank you and I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you all might have. Uh, thank you very much, Melanie. And if there are any questions, go ahead and put them in chat. I, I have some questions though for you, Melanie. The numbers are, are not, they're extraordinary only in that it's a big number. And people, we've been talking about housing, you know, the need for housing for many years. It's not a new subject, but when you see the amount of numbers that we want to, to build, how do you bring people on board? Because you've got a, people with a wide variety of feelings about you know, where to put housing. And then some areas of the county may have struggles with water or infrastructure. How do you pull all that together? So what I what I always think and, and say is if it were easy to build housing, we would have enough housing for our community and we don't. So we know that we have some challenges. And so we really through our, um, you know, we're really utilizing our housing element update public engagement process, partner engagement process to really help inform. Um, so we're strategic for where we're proposing to put this housing to the extent that we can identify particular property owners that are particularly motivated and wanting to work with us. Uh, we do that and we're really gonna have a series of programs and policies based on what we've heard from our community, based on what we know are those real challenges um, and uh, to really have this plan kind of lay out that map for us. So, you know, it, it, it's not an easy task. Uh, that's also why our minimum numbers have increased so substantially because this, as a state as a whole and here locally, we have fallen um, extremely behind in housing for our residents, for our residents who live and work here in Monterey County. Do you think there's going to be have to be a little bit of a change in mindset about how, as a county, we look at putting housing together, given given the need? 
Yeah, there really is. I mean, it depends who you who who you talk to and who you are within the county. But um, the fact that we haven't seen a lot of, especially in the unincorporated areas, a lot of housing being built and developed over time. Uh, I think that in and of itself is reflective of what folks are accustomed to. Um, we also know with just increasing costs, reducing you know land and resources, we also need to be a little more efficient with the the physical space and land that we have. And so some of that is also adjusting to, um, you know, in unincorporated areas where it's appropriate, a little higher density than maybe folks are looking at. Um, you know, we're not talking about sticking large apartment complexes in the middle of unincorporated Monterey County, but I think that's where really um, getting folks to think openly, think creatively, um, and be open to, to looking a little bit different than, than how we've been able to build housing in the past is gonna be really needed. Um, and to just be really open-minded for, you know, really helping in particular to help house our workers where the jobs are. As we know, it's highly unaffordable on the Monterey Peninsula area. And we have a huge amount of folks who commute uh, from the inland areas. And so helping to alleviate some of our traffic issues um, by solving some of these housing uh, situations will be important too. Thank you very much, Melanie. Really great information. And as Melanie said, we will send the slides that she is part of her presentation. We'll send those all out to you so you have that data. Thanks very much, Melanie, Thank you. For, for sharing this with us. And now we're going to turn to some very happy summer news. If you are not a fan of the library, you should be because the Summer Reading Club has started and it's sometimes it's the best part of the year, right? Where you're out for the summer, but yet you can you can sit down and read a book, you know, without having to worry about anything else to do. Hillary Thayer from our Free Libraries is here to talk about what fun is in store for us for the Summer Reading Club program. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me. And I have put into the chat a link directly to our webpage, which has all of the dates and times and details and how to download your reading log and all the good stuff. First, we have already started. This is June 14th through July 29th, and it is for all ages. So you are never too old to have fun reading. You are never too young to be read aloud to and enjoy looking at pictures. We start off our youth with the best thing of all. The moment they sign up, they get a free book, brand new of their very own to take home. We have reading logs for the kids. For teens and adults, we give you a little bingo card of activities. So you can read, you can visit a library, you can try a new database, you can attend a library program. We have a whole variety of activities. You just play bingo. And then we have prizes when everybody finishes. We also have programs across all of our branches and at some of our bookmobile stops. Again, all of this is free. There is not an admission or attendance charge for anybody to any of this. Um, we have shows ranging from juggling and puppets to art and magic and making your own zine and painting. Um, log on to the web page and look at the schedule. It's quite vast. Um, we hit every one of our branches and a couple of our bookmobile stops. For Pajaro, since the branch is closed, we are doing our shows in Pajaro Park. And they had their first one this week and I heard they had a very successful wild 30 kids enjoying a great show outside in beautiful Pajaro Park. So we are still coming to Pajaro. We go all over the county. Um, the some of the programs require registration because they fill up and that's for materials. I highly recommend if you're interested in the paint parties, for example, those fill up lickety split and I've attended one and they are magnificent. They are so much fun. You can participate online. You can sign into our online reading program, do all your participation and logging online. The only thing you have to come to a branch for is to pick up your prizes. We can't mail them to you. So just drop by one of our branches and pick up your prizes. I want to really express our appreciation to all of our funders, the Foundation for Monterey County Free Libraries, the California Library Association and the California State Library. They are making this free of charge and we are delighted to bring it to you. Side by side with Summer Reading Club, we also have our lunch at the library going on. 
And that's a program where we partner with our local school districts to serve lunch at the library. When kids are not in school, sometimes that cafeteria lunch is the best fullest meal that that child may get. And they can come visit a library and get that same great meal in a lovely library setting. And we give away books, we do activities, we have a lot of fun when we're serving lunch. So go ahead and reach out to your local branch for the specifics on lunch, because they're all different schedules, all different times a day um, during the week. And I'm happy to answer any questions if I can and point you to call your local branch if I can't answer it for you today. Thank you, Hillary. Now, one thing I need to know as a, as a party planner, how do you decide each year what activities that you bring to the library because you really do run the gamut uh, of a wide variety of things. Are there some things that you know hands down that everybody want to see and how do you try new things? Well, that's, that's a great question. And our planning is year round for summer reading. Uh, the first thing we do is we survey the people who attend. So if you attend one of our programs, you might get handed a survey by one of our staff members about your experience. We also look at numbers, how many people are coming, talk to people attending, and then we look for a wide variety. So we know that a magician, for example, is almost always going to be a hit. Kids love magic, but we also want to be sure kids have the experience of maybe a live animal show or an in-depth art experience or live music. So we want to make sure that there's a variety. We have some performers that we work with year after year, it just, it never gets tired. It never gets old. And they refresh their shows and bring back someone new. For example, Rocksteady Juggling has worked with us many years and the kids just go crazy. They love watching Rocksteady Juggling. Juan Sanchez brings live music and he is amazing. Even, you don't have to bring a kid. We'll let you sit in the audience and just enjoy the music of Juan Sanchez. So we do have some repeats. And if they're repeating, they freshen up their act, um, bring new things, because they know they're going to be visiting probably the same kids again. Um, anybody who's interested, please reach out to the library. We do have a process and we want to know more. But if you're at all interested, start by giving us a call and we'll see what we can do. So kids should get their reading log either in person or online and they can get their book. And they they launch off, and then what's the what's the usual um, amount of time? I know that they, you want to read a certain amount of time to fill in your log. Well, we we give the we expand the program over six weeks. We have kids who finish in four days. We have those super readers who are just going to crank out that reading, bring back that log in week one. Um, you have the full time of the program, which is six weeks. We also give a little end time at the end. You happen to be on vacation for that last week or it isn't a convenient week to come back to the library. We keep a few prizes in all of our libraries for those you know, headed into August, but we know August is often that time when families are getting ready for school to start and things like that. So the programs will all end at the end of July, um, but we readers of all ages, Take your time, race right through, but there's no rush. The prizes will still be there at the end of six weeks. So if you are a slow and steady reader, you keep on reading. We honor that too. Thank you so much, Hillary. And thanks for always the, the inspiration for reading, you know, all year round. All year round, but a lot of us think summer is especially fun. Agreed. And thanks everyone for joining us on the news briefing today. Our next briefing is next week. We'll see you then.